everyone, and welcome to Think Future. My name is Chris Kalabugas, and once again, we're coming at you live from deep, deep, deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking AI, startups, and the future. Not necessarily those, and not necessarily in that order. If you watch on YouTube, smack that subscribe button and hit that bell so you'll be notified when a new show comes online. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast server, please subscribe, please drop a note in Apple Podcasts. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now, you probably noticed, if you're watching my background, is that I have now replaced my old Innovation Mastery book, which I've gotten rid of. That's right, folks. I've kicked innovation to the curb. And now I'm focusing on my latest effort called Beyond Stoicism. That's right, folks. I practice something beyond Stoicism. And everyone's into Stoicism. There's a lot of people out there who are into Stoicism, which is great. And you're probably thinking to yourself, what are you talking about? What are you talking about, Chris? It's supposed to be an AI show. You only talk about AI. Nothing about AI other than AI. I'm just going to take a moment to talk about Beyond Stoicism, which is a book I recently wrote on the practice of ataraxia. And the word ataraxia basically means supreme calmness. And somebody mentioned once that when I work with people and, and I walk into a room, everybody gets calm. I'm a calming presence in the room. And I thought to myself, why is that? It's because I practice ataraxia. And I thought to myself, you know what? I should really write something. I should really write a book on the practice of ataraxia. So I have now written a book on the practice of ataraxia. Thank you, uh, my busy little digitars, as, my, as well as myself working together on this. And I published it on Amazon, and I'll put a link in the show notes below in case you want to take a look at it. But yeah, it has replaced Innovation Mastery because, like I said before, innovation has been kicked to the curb. It is a f- not a not a product. It's a feature. So let's talk about AI. Let's talk about AI because everyone's talking about AI, and we can't not talk about AI on a podcast called AI Startups and the Future, or with a tagline of AI startups and the future. So let's talk about the actor strike. Now the actor strike and the writer strike have been going on for a long time. And has the writer strike over? I think they're still going. Hollywood is striking and they're striking for a long period of time. And the reason why they're striking is that they're worried. Well, first of all, they're worried about getting paid. And secondly, they're worried about AI. And there's a lot of stories that are going around. I did this on a previous show talking about how the studios want to digitize individuals and then use their likenesses later on as AI avatars. Now, I am okay with this. And probably you're probably saying to yourself, why are you okay with this, Chris? Why you shouldn't be okay with this? Because the studios are going to take your likeness and they're going to use it and they're going to pay you a sec, nothing. And I'm like, that's wrong. That's wrong. Now, you might be thinking, oh, what are you talking about? You're a libertarian. You're a capitalist. You should get this. Well, there's a difference between capitalism and doing what's right, right? So think of it this way. If I were Tom Cruise, or if I were somebody famous or or pretty, pretty famous, I would have a huge bunch of attorneys out there looking for things that looked like me, trying to steal my likeness for free, and do something with it. Maybe it would be a, I don't know, a deep fake or something like that. They would steal my likeness and do something for it. And I would go out there and search them down and I would sue them for stealing my likeness and or not paying for my likeness or licensing my likeness, right? Once you get to a certain level of celebrity, this becomes normal. Using somebody's likeness is something you got to pay for. You got to get approval and you got to pay for. So if you ask me, the right thing to do would be to go to these actors and extras and writers and whoever and say, if I'm going to take a snapshot of you, whether it's a visualized snapshot or a, a 3D model or even a writing sample of you, and then I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to ask, I'm going to take this version of you and I'm going to ask an AI to recreate you as a 3D image as an audio clip, as a written, a written book, a written prompt or whatever, in the style of you. So if I'm going to take your likeness and I'm going to use your likeness to do something new with AI, then I should pay you for that. My likeness is mine. 
and you should pay me for my likeness. Now, are the studios going to do this? Probably not. Probably one of the things that they want to do is they want to eliminate extras. They want to use the extras or the actors to create their initial avatar 3D images. And then they're going to say, you know, now that I have it, I'm not going to pay you anymore. But that's wrong. That's completely wrong. And I understand some people might say, well, that's capitalism. And I said, no, 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 that's not capitalism. That's just wrong. You are taking something that I own, which is my likeness, and you are stealing it from me, and you are using it without my permission and without paying me. Movies, TV shows, they all already have budgets to pay actors and extras. All I'm saying is that if you have a 3D version of an actor or an extra or a writer, and you're going to use that 3D version of an actor or, <laughs> actor or an extra or a writer in your work, then you should pay them, whether they appear in reality or not. You should pay the person who take, you've taken the likeness of and given them something. And sure, it might not be the exact same rate that you would get paid if you were there in person, but you should get paid, damn it. I mean, think of it this way. If I were an extra in a movie, let's say My Big Fat Greek Wedding 3, which I'm not in, but, you know, it's their loss. They look at me and they go, well, this is a guy, this guy looks Greek. I want to put him in the movie. They take my likeness and they put me in the movie. Maybe they make me an extra in some crowd. And I think to myself, you know what? You can do that as long as you pay me. And then they can use me here and here and here and here. They could use my likeness everywhere. I don't have to physically travel to these locations or do any of these things, but money continues to roll into my account. Think of it like a royalty. If they want to use my likeness, they should pay me. And that's how it should be. Now, I was having a X conversation with somebody the other day, and they were concerned about job loss from AI. And we came to the conclusion, or at least I said, that yes, there will be a lot of job loss from AI. And he was worried about all of the job loss that would occur. I'm like, yes, there will be a lot of job loss from AI. But there are, there are areas, there are things that we can do as human beings to lessen the impact of that, or at least push it further down the line. And what I am saying it is, is digitization. So if, if there's anything that you can do that can be digitized, then that is a more likely AI-driven career. So for example, if you're a writer, if you're a musician, if you're a photographer, if you can do anything, if you can create any kind of media that's digitizable, like movies, like writing, like TV, like imagery, all of this stuff that's digitizable, virtual, even teaching, those can all be eliminated with AI, or at least reduced. So those jobs, yes, they're definitely going to go away first. They're the first jobs that are going to go away. The teacher, the author, the actor, the musician, the podcaster, the middle manager, the pixel pusher. Those jobs will go away. If you're pushing pixels now, then there's be, there's, it's pretty sure that this job's going to go away. What's not going to go away? Physical. And I said this back in 2017. I even sent the guy a link. In 2017, I predicted that blue-collar work, physical work, is actually going to start to be on the ascension again. Because this is stuff that robots can't do. This is stuff that AI can't do. This is stuff that only humans can do. And this is how I believe the world of the future the world of work for the future will be. You're going to have tons of things being taken care of by AI. Jobs that maybe humans do today, but they'll be better taken care of by AI. And there's going to be a whole slew of other jobs that only humans can do. Creative jobs, physical jobs, things that people can do, but AI can't. And somebody says, well, you know, what about Boston Ro Dynamics? What about those robots? Are you kidding? You know how far behind robots are? You know, we have these dystopian visions of robots clearing tables and, and, and doing things, but they can't do it. Robots are way behind when it comes to physical stuff. Human beings are supreme in that space. Right now, we have this weird issue with value. 
the stuff that AIs can do currently has a lot of value that human beings are doing. And the stuff that human beings are doing has less value, the physical stuff. I think we're in for a disruption where that's flipped. If you're a human being and you can do physical things, you will probably get paid even more than the CEO. If you're a CEO or a middle manager, your job will be replaced by an AI. So if you really want job security, if you really want to get a job that you're sure isn't going to be eliminated by AI, do something physical. That's it for me for today. See you next time. And until then, don't forget to think future.